Should a Christian watch Obi-Wan Kenobi? And our answer to that our explanations is that's completely up to you. But we'll heavily advise that if you plan to watch it mindlessly as another piece of entertainment, then we would recommend against it. Why would we recommend against watching a show as a piece of entertainment even though it is literally a piece of entertainment? Well, we'll elaborate after this quick roll of the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer. They're coming. Stay hidden. Or we will not survive. Leave us alone. When the time comes, he must be trained. Like you trained his father? You still want Kenobi. He's gone. Maybe you've been looking in the wrong places. I want every lowlife and bounty hunter to squeeze him. So the first episode of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series was just released and most of you either watched it already or are planning on watching it but you are unsure or you may be looking for some sort of explanation from a Christian perspective or you really just stumble across this video looking up Obi-Wan Kenobi Christian. That's a very common search term for the channel recently. <laughs> well, you have arrived at the right video. But just a disclaimer, this video is not a review as the series has not dropped yet as of recording this video. But this is just a discussion based on current knowledge on the show's potential plot, speculation by other content creators and fans, interviews, articles and other things across the internet looked at from a Bible-believing Christian perspective. But before getting into speculation, first let's elaborate on the statement we made at the beginning of the video. The Star Wars mythos is held very tightly to the heart of Christian fictional media fans, even though its whole premise and underlying message is a complete 180 to what the Bible and the Christian faith is all about on a whole. Now to such a statement, many love to respond, it's just fiction, it's just a show, it's just a movie, it isn't that deep or whatever equivalent remarks. But even the very creator of Star Wars, the legendary George Lucas, made his intentions clear of dismantling the concept of religion for a sense of spirituality known a long time ago, like since 1999. And where does God fit into this concept of the universe, in this cosmos that you've created? Is the Force God? I put the Force into the movies in order to try to awaken a certain kind of spirituality in young people. Uh, more a belief in God than a belief in any particular um, you know, religious system. I mean, the, the, the real question is to ask the question, because if you, if you haven't enough interest in the mysteries of life to ask the questions, is, is there a God or is there not a God, um, uh, that's, that's, for me, the worst thing that can happen. You know, if you ask a young person, is there a God, and they say, I don't know, you know, I, I think you should have an opinion about that. Do you have an opinion or are you looking? Well, I think there is a God. No question. What that God is, or what we know about that God, I'm not sure. One reason, one critic said, that Star Wars has been so popular with young people is religion without strings attached, that it becomes a very thin base for theology, in fact. Well, it is a thin base for theology. That's why I would hesitate to call the Force God. Um, when the film came out, uh, almost every single religion took Star Wars and used it as an example of their religion. And, and we're able to relate it to young people and saying this is what, and relate the stories specifically to the Bible and relate stories uh, to the Quran and the, you know, the Torah and things. And so it's like, you know, if it's a tool that can be used to make uh, old stories be new and relate to younger people, that's what the whole point was. Yeah. 
Now don't get me wrong, Star Wars is one of the most entertaining fictional media franchises we have today and I was once a huge lover of all the IPs. I literally have a gaming group called Squadron Gaming which I named after binging Star Wars The Clone Wars in 2017 after Season 1 Episode 3 with the Shadow Squadron called Squadron Gaming which I stream on Twitch for and create gaming content. Now many take the biblical themes or undertones evident throughout the Star Wars mythos as it is some kind of Christian parallel or allegory. But it's actually a tale that is more closely aligned and rooted in Luciferian, New Age, Gnostic, and occultic beliefs. In a previous video, we went in depth on various aspects of the Force that we deem as important for Christians to consider when expressing their admiration for Star Wars, as well as highlighting major statements that George Lucas made in an interview with Bill Morris, which is where the clip that was just played came from. But unfortunately, as Christians, we tend to refute the word of God for the sake of the enjoyment and escaping factor we get from our favorite pieces of fictional entertainment. And Star Wars is including with that. And you may be thinking, hold up, you're being extreme. I don't refute the word of God by watching these things. After all, it's just fiction. But is it just fiction? Like obviously an intergalactic war in a galaxy far, far away and a sword made from a crystal in it that when powered on makes it the deadliest weapon of choice in a galaxy far far away is just fiction but the underlying story and message that the creator of star wars himself said that is all about is that just fiction as we continue the number one scripture that we consider you keep in mind when thinking about watching any piece of fictional media in the future is luke 12 verse 48 which says from everyone who has been given much much will be demanded and from the one who has been entrusted with much much more will be asked We'll double back to the scripture later on in the video, but let's get into what we can expect to see in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. So the series is going to be set between Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, and Episode 4, A New Hope, and will most likely involve his interactions with the Rebel series and tie up some loose ends along the way. Given that he appeared in the series for one episode in a confrontation with Maul and the Inquisitors are shaping up to play a huge role in the series. Diving into speculation and known information, a nerdist article states that the overarching message of the show is hope in face of great odds. Going according to the teaser's description on YouTube, it states that the story begins 10 years after the dramatic events of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, where Obi-Wan Kenobi faced his greatest defeat, the downfall and corruption of his best friend and Jedi apprentice Anakin Skywalker, who turned to the dark side as the evil Sith Lord Darth Vader. The series stars Ewan McGregor reprising his role as iconic Jedi Master and also marks the return of Hayden Christensen in the role of Darth Vader. A previous sizzle reel from the upcoming show revealed more context about the show's overall setting. In the short feature, it, Ewan McGregor and director Deborah Cho discussed that Kenobi follows a dark time for Obi-Wan, where even just being a Jedi isn't safe. Despite this, his one task is to keep Luke safe, but the journey only unwinds from there. Entertainment Weekly also noted that the series fills in the gaps of what happened in the 19 years between the events of Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Current rumors suggest that the story is focused on Darth Vader's quest to find Obi-Wan. If this is the case, it will be interesting to see how the producers create drama from the scenario, as we know Vader fails in his mission. But as for now, all of these reports about the story are unconfirmed. For me, I'm looking out to see if there's going to be anything in relation to Obi-Wan training to retain his personality after death, as Yoda learned to do so throughout the final episodes of Season 6 in the Clone Wars series. And given that the fact that Yoda did tell him at the end of Episode 3 that he would be greeted by Qui-Gon Jinn to learn an important skill which we can see in this clip. In your solitude on Tatooine, training I have for you. Training? An old friend has learned the path to immortality. One who has returned from the netherworld of the Force. Your old master. Qui-Gon. How to commune with him, I will teach you. And we dealt in depth with Yoda's journey to know how to retain his identity after death from the Clone Wars series in our video covering the Force Explained from a Christian perspective, including Bible verses that clearly speak against things like necromancy and themes evident in Star Wars. 
So that is all I was able to muster up regarding the Obi-Wan Kenobi series that I deemed relevant to note which I hope helped you a bit in whether or not you are going to watch it on Disney Plus when it comes out. We do our best not to do direct recommendations to anything we cover despite our breakdowns, opinions or views on it. For those wondering if I'm going to watch it, I would eventually but not just mindlessly as a piece of entertainment as after doing so many videos and research into fictional media, I can't mindlessly consume it as a piece of entertainment anymore like I used to even despite how critically acclaimed it may be. And most definitely in relation to Luke 12 verse 48 mentioned earlier which says from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded and from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Simply meaning we'll be judged by what we know. We have a plethora of videos why we as Bible believing Christians can't just go around saying that every show is just fiction. Now when I say it's just fiction, I am relating to the underlying story, not the fact that there are people who can jump 10 miles into the air over exaggerating and pulling out a lightsaber to chop down stuff that is that part of it is just fiction but the underlying story that most fictional media content holds it isn't just fiction we touched on a video where we briefly looked at some of the comic book pioneers such as stan lee jack kirby george lucas grant morrison garth enos and a lot of them on what they believe and that is something that i'm sure that if christian comic book nerds actually sit down and listen to what these pioneers believe it will completely shock them and i'm a huge fictional media enthusiast i mean the gameplay you see in the background was recorded after i finished recording this audio but regardless of my love for fictional media truth and what the word of god says comes before anything for me personally and when these guys are openly saying that they went to the bible for certain characters or are literally twisting the scriptures especially in the case of star wars where george lucas literally said his intent was to awaken a sense of spirituality in those that watch star wars rather than a belief in any one particular religion because he believes that all religions serve the same god just everyone sees a different part of the elephant which we went in depth on in our first video on why this actually isn't the case we can't just continue to go wrong saying it's just fiction when these fictional media pioneers are telling us directly what they believe obviously kyber crystals lightsabers laser blasters all those things are science fiction but the underlying message and the very core foundation of what fictional media is built upon isn't just fiction i can't stop stressing that enough but with that being said, that's it for this installment of A Christian Preview 2. We plan to do more of these in the future for upcoming movies and films I have some base knowledge on or for those that are requested. If you do end up watching or stumble upon this video after watching the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, then let us know in the comments with a spoiler warning of course on the various things that you were able to spot from the show, especially any biblical undertones. I know some of you may agree or disagree with our perspective on it, so let us know any and all all thoughts in the comments below and with that remember these videos are not to tell you what you can and cannot watch as that is your decision to make but it's simply so you no longer blindly consume